Altar Aranosian manages to stop Roger Gutierrez in the eighth round. Now heading into this fight, I expected Aranosian to win. I wasn't really too sure how the fight would go, but I expected it to probably go the distance. Uh, based on the fact that Gutierrez has shown toughness in the past, he has shown a good chin, overall decent conditioning. I, I think he's, you know, showed at least relatively good. And also the fact that he doesn't like to open up much, he's relatively low volume. I didn't expect him to get put in the line of fire, plus the fact that Aranosian is not a particularly big puncher. But what happened in this fight is he pretty much got brutalized. And he was getting beat on, on the inside pretty much from the opening bell. Now, tactically, this fight went through different sort of changes. Uh, Aranosian was looking to box and move, use a lot of angles from in the, in the early rounds. But the problem with that uh, was the fact that Aranosian, or should I say Gutierrez, did have uh, a very, I won't say a considerable hand speed advantage, but he had a slight hand speed advantage uh, as far as when he commits to his power shots. He does have quick hands, and he does have very sneaky power with his straight right hand. And he ended up getting clipped in the second round after winning the first round, and getting caught with momentary shots that were able to momentarily stun him periodically in the first four rounds of the fight. Gutierrez did definitely, in my view, have the slight advantage, I think, at mid to long range. But when it came to mid to close range, the fight was basically a mismatch. Aranosian altered his tactics and decided to close the distance and smother Aaron, uh, Gutierrez's work to where Gutierrez could not really get range on his straight right hand and Gutierrez is also somebody who is extremely reactionary in the way he fights. He's not particularly crafty. He is limited. Uh, he does not really have the most polished or effective footwork. He doesn't close the distance effectively nor create distance effectively with his footwork. Uh, he needs opponents to open up in front of him and make mistakes. That's how he was able to get into the Hector Luis Garcia fight when he did. He got pretty much thoroughly dominated and outboxed soundly through the first nine or ten rounds. Really didn't even come. Really didn't even lay a glove on him. Didn't land any uh, clean punches on him. But in the in the tenth, eleventh, and twelfth rounds, uh, Garcia seemed to kind of gas out. He seemed to show fatigue, and Gutierrez was able to land some good shots and mount his way back into the fight and steal a couple of those late rounds. But in this fight, he was not allowed any breathing room. Uh, Aranosian changed his tactics up, I think, after the fourth round where he got buzzed again. And he immediately got on the inside. He started smothering his work. He started working Gutierrez's body. Gutierrez eventually started uh, reverting to holding. And, you know, this wasn't, a, you know, a Rene Alvarado, a guy who was... Yes, who was probably the same size as Aranosian. Aranosian, by the way, was the smaller guy in the ring, but was, uh, like I said, obviously the more crafty fighter and the far more proactive fighter, so he was able to have his way in terms of ring positioning. But Alvarado got dropped in the early rounds of that first fight, and his confidence uh, in his chin never really regained. He started boxing and moving a little bit more in that fight, but Gutierrez simply had the frame and the speed to be able to reach him at distance in those, in those two fights. And Alvarado definitely showed up in the second fight extremely gun-shy, and that allowed Alvarado a lot of, or should I say Gutierrez, a lot of space to work. But Aranosian didn't allow him any space to work. He was turning him, uh, he was piercing through his guard, he was working his body, he was... He, he basically just put a beating on him. Uh, Gutierrez really had no answers apart from the clinch and, and occasionally throwing long power shots when the referee would separate the two before he'd close distance. But Aranosian sharpened up his defense. He showed pretty good head movement. And by the time the 6th and 7th rounds came, he started showboating. Really just putting on a show. And effectively, after the referee, I believe, took off a point uh, from Gutierrez, I think, in the 7th round. 7th or 8th round, he took off a point from Gutierrez for holding. Uh, he stopped holding altogether. He didn't really revert to holding at any point afterwards. I think immediately afterwards he did, but eventually immediately broke. And Aranosian just started piling on the attack, landing consistent, strong body shots, and Gutierrez effectively got broken down, and it looked like he was about to quit. He got put down uh, with a series of shots, head and body. He went down on one knee, and it looked like he was about to take the count, but he got up on a count of ten. And he eventually got beat on the rest of the round, and the corner effectively pulled him out from that point onwards, because they saw that Gutierrez, unlike, you know, 
in some of his previous fights, say the Hector Luis Garcia fight, which he was losing, um, or even maybe the Tanahara fight, he he was he was starting to show signs of fatigue and weakening that he had considerable signs of uh, fatigue and just weakening overall. His volume was going down. He wasn't getting as much power on his shots from long range, and he got severely outskilled and broken down, even with physical advantages in this fight. So congratulations to Otar Aranozzi, and this guy's captured my spotlight for, I think, a couple of years now before the uh, Starling Castillo fight. I can't exactly remember where I saw him first, but I did see him before the Castillo fight. Um, and I remember thinking that fight was going to be intriguing, and in that fight, he put on a serious beating on Castillo, and was actually able to drop him numerous times in the first round, and put up just a massive beating, put Castillo in survival mode, even after Castillo came off of wins against guys like, uh, Burgos and Contreras, who went on to get, you know, take Tanahara to a draw, which was very impressive, and his following performances against Cesar Juarez, and one other guy, I can't remember who his name was, but... He kind of struggled in those fights. He was getting pushed back. He is small for 135 pounds, and, you know, guys who are able to physically intimidate him and possibly keep him at bay and really control the center of the ring and show more craft are definitely going to pose big issues, but guys who are more reactionary and don't have the type of foot speed that Aronosian has, he's going to give a lot of issues. He's going to give a lot of issues. He kind of reminds me of an 135-pound version of uh, Sergei, Derevian, uh, Sergei Derevianchenko. You know, just in the manner of which he can turn guys, the way he likes to pivot weak side, you know, how, you know, particularly strong he is. He's a little bit limited at long distance, but he's particularly effective and very, very crafty with his footwork at mid to close range. And, you know, he's not a one punch knockout artist, but he collects a lot, a lot of, um, he's able to collect a lot of cumulative damage and break his opponents down. And he has tremendous conditioning. Except I think he's an even faster starter overall. I think he, you know, puts forth a better effort as far as imposing himself in early rounds better than even Derevianchenko did. But I, I, I definitely would like to see Aronosian in the mix. Where does Gutierrez go? This is his fifth defeat. I would like to see him come back, say, against somebody. I'd really like to see either guy against Chris Colbert because more well, Colbert's coming off of a relatively controversial win against uh, Valenzuela. But he was supposed to fight Gutierrez for the WBA strap. Uh, before Garcia stepped in his place and, you know, basically whooped his ass. But also, I think that'd be a... I won't necessarily say a step up from Gutierrez, but would be a good way for Aronosian to introduce himself. Maybe if he's able to get a deal with the PBC, seeing as he has fought on uh, Showbox before against Castillo. But, yeah, I'd like to see some step-ups from uh, here on out from Aronosian. He's 29 years old. Uh, he did have a little bit of an amateur career. He's turned professional in 2020. Never really made it to world level as, as an amateur, but definitely has developed as a professional to seem, seems to have legitimized himself as a contender in the division as an up-and-comer. So I would like to see where it goes from here onwards. Uh, Gutierrez, if he's getting bullied around like this by a guy like Aronosian, and I'm not taking anything away from Aronosian, he showed great skill as far as his craft, but if he's getting bullied like this on the inside by someone like Aronosian, um, he's definitely going to struggle with the physicality at 135 pounds. So, you know, back to the drawing board for him anyways. But yeah, very good performance by Aronosian. Have a good one.